The most commonly found material on aircraft is aluminum, but over time aluminum fatigues and corrodes. Not only that, but using aluminum can add a lot of unnecessary weight to the airframe, and adding more weight will inevitably reduce the efficiency of the aircraft. And for this reason, aircraft manufacturers are turning to carbon fiber to solve this problem. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you how carbon fiber is used on aircraft and whether or not it's the material of the future of aerospace. Usually when we talk about carbon fiber, we're actually talking about carbon fiber reinforced polymers, also known as carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Carbon fiber by itself actually consists of strands of carbon woven together into a sheet. You might remember from chemistry that carbon is actually the element that diamonds are made of. In other words, carbon is able to form crystalline structures that are extraordinarily strong. Because of this structure, the carbon fiber is extraordinarily strong when applying a force parallel to the strands. However, if you apply a force perpendicular to the strands, they easily separate. To mitigate this, carbon fiber sheets are placed on top of each other in perpendicular directions. This process is known as a layup, and you can continue to lay up these carbon fiber sheets in different directions to add more strength to even more directions. To lock these carbon fiber sheets into place, a resin or a liquid polymer is applied to the carbon fiber. Adding this resin to the carbon fiber makes the carbon fiber sheets become rigid. After adding the resin to the carbon fiber, it's now known as carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Carbon fiber reinforced polymers falls under the classification of a composite material. A composite material is a material that's made up of one or more materials that have unique characteristics, but when combined together, form different characteristics from the individual materials. Aerospace manufacturers have found great use in using these composite materials in aircraft. They're manufactured in a similar process as to what I just explained. However, this process is mostly automated. The carbon fiber arrives to the factory in spools. From there, these spools of carbon fiber are woven into sheets. From there, they're laid up with a resin and formed into the shape that's required. In order for the part to be set properly without any air bubbles, it's placed into a giant oven or what's known as an autoclave. When this process is complete, you're left with a material that has a better strength to weight ratio than aluminum or even titanium. For decades, aluminum composite materials have been the go-to in aviation. Aluminum is cheap, easy to manufacture, and it's a fairly light material for aircraft. But now these carbon fiber reinforced polymers are taking the place of aluminum to build structural elements of the aircraft. Carbon fiber has now been used to make wings, tails, fuselages, and even wing boxes on aircraft. Carbon fiber is perhaps the most transformative material in the aerospace industry. Replacing aluminum with carbon fiber really seems to be the wave of the future. Boeing has been proving how transformative carbon fiber really can be, starting with their 787 Dreamliner. When the 787 Dreamliner was released, it was one of the most successful aircraft ever sold. At the time, it was shattering sales records. And why did this airplane have so much success? It's certainly not the biggest airplane on the market, and it's not even close to being the cheapest airplane on the market. The reason that the Dreamliner saw so much success is largely because of its efficiency. The Dreamliner boasts an incredible average of 20% efficiency when compared to traditional designs. And one of the main reasons for this increased efficiency is because it is the first aircraft with the majority carbon fiber airframe, meaning more than 50% of the airplane's weight is carbon fiber material. In addition to its predominantly carbon fiber fuselage, it was the first commercial aircraft to feature carbon fiber wing spars. So why did this matter so much to the airlines that were purchasing this aircraft? For one, using carbon fiber drastically reduced the weight of the design. And because of this design choice, the aircraft was much more efficient than traditional designs. This means the airline will save a lot of money on fuel. <laughs> money, money, money. But they won't just save money on fuel. Because carbon fiber doesn't fatigue or erode like aluminum does, the maintenance on the aircraft also has been significantly reduced. And this wasn't just a theory for Boeing. They had hard data to prove that this aircraft wasn't going to require as much maintenance. On the Boeing 777, they had installed a carbon fiber tail. 
Even though the Boeing 777's tail was 25% bigger than the 767, it still required 35% less scheduled maintenance than the 767. And as I have discussed in previous videos, airlines traditionally have very slim margins. So a 35% reduction in maintenance time is gonna be huge for the airline. And at this point, you may be asking yourself, well, why don't we use carbon fiber for everything on an airplane? And that's because there are certain downsides to using carbon fiber materials. The first of which is carbon fiber takes a lot longer to manufacture. Some of these aerospace manufacturers have been using aluminum to make airplanes for well over 100 years. So they have a pretty good handle on how to make airplanes with aluminum. And that kind of experience means their process is extraordinarily streamlined. And introducing a complex composite material like carbon fiber to a manufacturing line that has been streamlined after over 100 years of experience is no small task. Over the past 20 years, we've gotten significantly better at using carbon fiber in manufacturing. However, it's still about 10 times more than steel. But now that companies like Boeing and Airbus have already spent the overhead on building these manufacturing facilities, specifically for carbon fiber, we'll see that price drop even further. However, you can only optimize this process so much. Companies like Airbus quickly took note of the success of the Dreamliner and started adapting more and more carbon fiber into their designs as well. For example, the Airbus A350 XWB features a 52% carbon fiber weight ratio. And according to Airbus, this means a weight reduction of up to 20% when compared to aluminum parts. The shift towards carbon fiber materials being used more on aircraft was really done in response to the airliner's increased focus on efficiency. And keeping in mind, this was done in the before Corona era. In the wake of COVID, the future purchases of any surviving airlines are gonna have an incredibly increased focus on efficiency, which means that carbon fiber is going to continue to play an even more significant role in the aerospace industry. And not only is carbon fiber being used more and more in the aviation industry, but it's also being used more and more in the space industry. There's little doubt that carbon fiber will be one of the most transformative materials of our generation. And if you wanna to continue to learn more about the future of air and space, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.